Welcome back to UK Knowledge Guru. Today we call Magna Satta with me. She started as a student. She came to UK as a student and then she opened her company. She self done a self sponsorship. So we wanted to know everything. How did she manage? So hi Magna, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank I'm you for inviting fine. me to your channel. So you started as a student and you came to UK as a student. Uh, so first of all, I would tell you today, um, I'm about to turn 50 and I came to the UK at the age of 47. Wow. And uh, I came as a student in uh, UK and I took sponsorship from the uni first, like as a Coventry University was my sponsor. And uh, then I, after completing my master's in healthcare management, I took up um, the graduate. You know, what uh, challenges you have faced to get the sponsorship? Uh, as as on the graduate route, I was looking for sponsors and I visited many lawyers and I was also applying NHS jobs, uh, but I didn't get any NHS job. And um, plus, the, plus I know I would be falling prey to many scammers. To If I wanted a job, I wanted directly from the company or if I wanted to get somebody to sponsor me, I didn't want to pay him because True. I'm going to work yeah. for you. Yeah, what's the point and of paying so yeah, much money for that? The children are like paying and they are falling prey to various scammers. So what was the next step you did? Like, what was your main thoughts? What you wanted to do? Like, you wanted, did you open the company? Did you went to the lawyer? What did you do next? Yeah. When you decided that you wanted yeah. to switch from graduate visa to self-sponsorship yeah so i used to watch various youtube channels and i used to watch your channel also and that's why i was watching your videos you know innovator visa that's why you know i i did mail you if you remember here i wanted to add this that sh how did she contacted me so i created there was a video on my channel uh, how to apply the uk innovator founder visa so she contacted me that how can i do it so because she was desperate she wanted to know how to get into that innovator founder with a category so i was like communicating via emails and that's how we have introduced to each other um, so the videos really help so you should watch all those videos which i have created mm -hmm. so what was your next step then yeah how many lawyers you can watch but their prices are again still very very high uh, from somewhere from twenty thousand to thirty thousand thirty thousand pounds just, yeah, for, yeah, that just for getting your self-sponsored so again, it was a big amount. So I thought, you know, let me see if I can get some cheaper options because what you need in self-sponsorship, we are obviously going to tell you afterwards how did the procedure work. Um, I contacted uh, Work Permit Cloud because their fees was the lowest. Work Permit Cloud, which is in East London, their fees is lowest uh, to help me to get the sponsor license. So I thought uh, when many people have done it, then I can do it. So. I went through the process in detail. Um, there's no such specific route as self-sponsorship route in the gov.uk website. So you have to be very vigilant enough to see which person is genuine and does do their information match with the gov.uk website. So you have to collateral them. You have to you know understand both the things. Okay, so I just came, uh, even if I read about Work Permit Cloud and they send me the leaflet that they can do it for me, I went to their office, not one time, several times. They used to tell me, don't come, we'll do it for you. I said, no, I used to go because the first time I went, their office was getting refurbished. So obviously, as I'm an adult student, I know uh, it could be any scam. So I went two times more just to verify they're still there and they're pretty good. They have a good hold in East London. They have a very big and good office and their rates are very, very reasonable. Uh, they helped me to get the sponsor. But before that, I had to register a company. So Megna, what was your first step then? So the first step was to start a company which has a sponsor license. So how did you register a company? Uh, I had also seen your uh, video on uh, registering a company. On my uh, channel, the yeah, one which is like yeah, how to start a yeah. company. Okay. I had seen that, but um, I thought, you know, it was initial state. So I gave that job to my accountant, uh, but definitely you can take his help. Uh, he has uh, good videos on you, very informative videos on how to register a company. So once you register a company, I did take help of my accountant. He registered the company for me. And uh, these people were ready to get me the sponsor license for the company. Obviously, uh, before that, you need a business idea. So my business was, of course, whatever I had done in India for past 10 years, I was running fitness classes. So I had this in mind. 
so i started i thought of starting a company related to my field which is yoga so i started a company which is named yoga care limited i took the help of uh, one of my accountant i can share his detail he helped me to register the company and um, registered it with hmrc in the company's house as well as hmrc because we do need these um, uh, papers when we file for the sponsor license what was the documents were needed uh, for registering a company uh, you don't need much documents you need the name of the company and obviously you need bad the background obviously you need a business plan what are you going to do you just can't start a random company you your qualifications and skill has to be matching and you should have a genuine intention to run the company so when you are planning a business you have to search for the company name and then register it online it's a very simple process many applicants think that like you have to have enough amount because i do get these kind of questions like do you need so much money to open a company so if you can explain uh, that no you don't need much um, money for opening an account uh, it, it it also relevant to your business now suppose if you want to start a food business uh, a restaurant obviously you can't do with 1000 pounds you obviously need some more money and i had uh, to start a yoga company and obviously i didn't need much i could have even shown 5000 to 10000 pound but i showed 15000 pound in my company i just transferred all my savings uh, into my company which was 15000 pound and it all depends it is relevant to your business if you are having any a recruitment agency for that say you just need an office and you need office rent for some months because that's your it depends on your business actually it depends on your business so you started a company you started you went to the um, accountant he opened the company for yeah, you yeah. and then you opened a bank account yeah i opened a bank account with metro bank and um, so do you need any like what documents so if you let the viewer yeah, know what documents we can discuss all the documents at the end so metro bank one month statement we need for applying for sponsor license or any bank whichever bank you open up any high street bank for, to be very precise you can't open any company on uh, online it should not be online banking it has to, uh, online bank basically it has to be a um, high street bank so for example tide star starling chase can because they don't have the branches on the no you need a high street bank so high street bank high has street, to be a high street high bank street, high street bank for the sponsored license that's important guys so yeah. do note that yeah. and for sponsored license you don't need x amount of money because many applicants think that they need like massive amount of funds to start a company you don't need that so what was your third step then after that um, after opening a bank account after opening a bank account i also had to take uh, insurance for the company which is employer liability insurance which is up to 5 million uh, and how much don't get scared <laughs> just it is 21 pounds to uh, 25 okay. pounds a 21 month pounds. yeah that much you need to pay every month uh, for that's that's a mandatory document which would you need you know for the sponsor license and what was the fourth step after that yeah i the you need uh, the place where you're going to start the company as of now i have registered my company at my home address so i had my tenancy agreement of my house so many I, applicant think that it's not possible that you can open a company at home uh, like where do you need an office and how to do that yeah. so you can do that from your home address yeah so i d i have registered my company at my home address i had my tenancy agreement with my landlord i did inform my landlord that i'm going to register the company in this address so yeah. what was your fifth step yeah i did uh, i actually want to the main thing is you have to do the business so obviously i have plans to run my company i started my website i have put the uh, timings of my website and everything and um, but your business was not working like it's a new business yeah so. so but obviously you have you have to have a pre plan you have to plan what are you going to do after getting the sponsor license you have to actually work for your company so i had to start the website so website and, and it also needs the website also needs your opening hours closing hours and the number of employees probably they are there on the website so and, all my yoga friends we are all there on this and they're going to help me in my so over here we i think we wanted to know one more thing that when you started a company you started a company as a director so you were the first director yeah. did you had any british national like because for sponsorship for sponsorship license you need a british national so yeah. if you can highlight that yeah, part please. yeah yeah so the, the after doing everything but the thing is you need an authorizing officer for the company you, you the authorizing officer has to be a british national or has an indefinite leave to remain 
so i had my friend uh, working with me she's my she's a main director of my company uh she's the first director i'm the second director and when i applied for sponsor license i applied to work permit cloud i got one course when you get the sponsor license you get one course that is cos certificate of sponsorship uh only one assigned to a particular company you can ask for more later when your company grows but with your sponsor license come one course which i got for my company with the help of work permit cloud and then i assigned the same course to myself as a skilled worker and um, the fees are all i'll ask him to put a video for you separately because it's too yeah, much yeah i'll share all the fees because yeah. you have to pay like 500 something for the course you have to pay for the sponsor license as well but i'll put that later on so yeah. once uh, i got the course uh, again for skilled worker i needed more money so it was too much money then again uh, and of course they are very reasonable the the lawyers which i who helped me to get the sponsor license they were very reasonable then again i remember his video on uh, you know how to apply for skill worker visa i went through the video i again called him and he helped me a lot and i filled the forms myself and i didn't have to pay anybody again for applying for the skill worker visa what i finally paid was just to Uh, the uh, work permit cloud uh, the helping me to get the sponsor license that's the only amount i paid to a lawyer and the rest everything i did with the help of um, uh, knowledge guru and um, it was quite a help you know and Thanks i saved a, yeah. and i saved a lot of money to be very i'm sitting here because you have helped me a lot yeah and i these, i called him and he's always available he always helps all so these videos if you see them like you know they are step by step so when you start watching them like step by step you can apply this whole journey yourself you don't need to i just wanted to add one more thing many applicant do ask this like is self sponsorship is possible so there is no route for the self sponsorship so that's why they, like you know so megna will be able to put more highlights towards it yeah there is no self set self sponsorship route it is it is a way it is you know just a way form a company get the license for the company and get yourself a sponsor rather than working for anybody else getting into scams and the same money which you give to sponsor yourself use it for your own business yeah so if you are a graduate visa for example and you wanted to switch to a company visa you can do that the way you need to do that is just like you open your own company find someone who is british national either you get them a bit like you know you make them a partner or you just like you know hire them make them an authorizing officer and then you can apply for the sponsored license so what documents do we need like for all um, this there are seven to eight documents but you can submit any four documents for the sponsor license and um, the, the all the documents he will tell you but i will tell you which i gave so first of all i gave uh, the tenancy agreement of my house the place where i registered my company So, and the second document i gave is the insurance from the company which i bought an insurance of 5 million insurance and uh, the third document was a bank statement and you need a pay hmrc reference you need all these documents four documents for your company for a sponsor license of a company do we need a bank certificate uh, yeah, if you add vat Th- that that certificate is also one of the documents so that, but you should have your genuine intention to do the business if you are thinking again if you're going to play around with home office it is not of possible you have to do the business you have to have a business idea you should have the genuine reason to apply and then do the business it's not like you know just register the company and play around with them no you have to do the business what you have thought you must be good at something think of a business which you can do and then register a company get yourself licensed so many people think that they need a running business they need like a statement which was done like you know like a bank statement hmrc statement pay statement or the tax they have paid so can you highlight that because megna company was recent like you know she just opened the company yeah i opened my company on uh, november the 3rd i remember my company was registered on november the 3rd and so that's 2023 yeah Uh, 23 and then uh, December I got my bank because you know the banks also they take time to give you to open a business account and then uh, I, I opened my account in December I transferred all my money all my savings into the account in the company account because I will be doing business with this rather than paying somebody 
so all my money is went into my bank account in my company business account and i took a print out of that so that becomes my second document first document is uh, the first is registering and uh, then i um, january i applied for january 4th i remember i got my license oh. and once i had my license in place i applied for course and they did it for me i got my course and the course with that course i applied my skilled worker visa a good long 8 weeks and i got a positive result on the 6th of march that my visa has been approved and i have got a 5 years skilled worker visa on my own company which i'm going to run genuinely and pay taxes genuinely so you basically many people think that like you know for the skilled worker visa you need to be an employee of a company so Did you mention when you were filling up your skill yeah, worker visa yeah. as an employee of a company yeah, or of as course, a director yeah. of a company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your skill, you should be under some skill code. Like my skill code is, um, I'm a lifestyle consultant for my own company. I'm also the director of the company. Plus, I'm the lifestyle consultant. You need the code because when you fill in the skill worker form, it is going to ask you what. And also, you also need the English language test when you apply for skill worker visa. But that's all. In and the what, in your degree because you have done this yeah degree. I have already done a UK degree I have an IELTS result that is also needed but that is for the skilled worker visa for sponsor license there are different documents which we have told you and for UK uh, skilled worker visa you have different set of documents that's your skill code that falls under that system and is there any job salary requirement yeah the salary requirement was twenty six two hundred. till april but i'm think it's going to change to 29000 something now so maybe like, do we need funds in the bank to sponsor the because you had you, you had two dependents with you yeah. so do you need and you were self as well like you know so yeah, yeah. it says that you need 1250 pound in your bank over certain period for 28 days so did you do, need that kind of funds no no if you are in the uk already from 2 years and they know you've been alive and supporting yourself Uh, unless you are from any other country then you need to show certain amount of funds but if you are already in the uk they know you've been working you have your pay slips you don't need to show any funds for your skilled worker visa if you are already in the uk for 2 years whatever is your bank statement genuine bank statement uh, i accompanied uh, my husband's bank statement my son's statement my son is um, 17 so for him uh, there was a question that how is he supporting themselves so i had to submit all the three bank statements mine my husband's and my son all our money going to parents pay where he eats his where he has his meals in his school all the funds which are generally in your account which you show transaction see most of the transactions we do your on with your bank card and i pay for my son son's trips and everything in the school so for his I attach his statements for my husband. I attach both of us statement, and for me, I attached all the statements. And so, was that was it required, like twelve hundred and fifty pound for your case? So, uh, no, it's not required because I was already in the UK and in the job. So that's why it was not required. Yeah, no, no. If you have any questions regarding this video or any videos regarding the benefits or like your know, marriage certificate or visa, feel free to contact me. You can always. send me an email directly or you can also join our whatsapp group the number is coming below and you can send us a message or join our group where we can help you in your questions and answers